Basically what I'm trying to do is keep a as smooth a surface as possible on this plate armor so that way less rust and dirt will accumulate. The more scratches and so forth, that's a, a strong, that's a, a good chance for rust to get a foothold. So the less, the smoother the surface, the less chance of the rust getting starting. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to keep it as clean as I can. The problem I have though is the more I sand it or polish it or whatever, I'm actually taking away from the surface. So I'm making the material thinner. Mm -hmm. So, but in order to keep it as clean as I can, I will start off with a slightly coarser sandpaper and work my way up through the numbers. And when you go up through the numbers, you're going into finer and finer grits to where I'm almost using, it's almost like a paper uh, that I'm sanding it with. And okay. it gives it that really fine, uh, fine finish. Now, if that's doing it here in an event, but if I'm at my house, I have an actual buffing wheel and I'm using the same technique. I'm using rouges that are, which are the blocks that you put on the wheel. Uh -huh. It's more and more finer grit and you're basically just smoothing out or taking down those ridges that, are, that happen from the scratches and so forth. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so you were also putting oil on a minute yep. ago. What, like, what purpose does that serve? The oil basically uh, soaks into the crystals of the, the material. Believe it or not, metal is a crystalline structure. So it, it um, the more it heats up, it expands. And so if you put oil on it, it gets in there and keeps it uh, less chance for oxygen to get to the metal. Um, and then the the oil that I use is, is a lanolin-based oil. Mm -hmm. um, a lot healthier, smells better, but it also lasts a lot longer on there than, say, if I was to use WD-40. Uh, WD-40, which is a water displacement formula, it, uh, it will uh, evaporate, whereas this is uh, a, a, a lanolin-based uh, formula, so it'll stay on the surface. Now the interesting thing is the majority of this suit right here is uh, spring steel. The shins and my thighs, the thighs and the shins are stainless or cress. Mm -hmm. um, so they're cro cro uh, corrosion resistant, Okay. Um, which is what cress means. Um, cor corrosion uh, resistant uh, steel. The, the Basically, the mild steel, the spring steel, that's what I really have to concentrate on to okay. keep it from rusting up. Okay. Uh, now, another question. You said that this is earlier you were talking to people and saying that this was like a Frankenstein yep. piece together armor. Yeah. Um, did people have Frankenstein armor back then, or did you just go ahead and order your set? Or? Depends on how rich you were. Uh -huh. um, the richer you were, the more you can actually go to an armor and say, hey, I want a suit, take my measurements, pay for it. Mm -hmm they make the entire suit. I don't have that kind of money. So for me to get a suit that from, that would fit me, I'm looking anywhere between $10,000 and $30,000 for properly fitting a uh, suit that's made for the fighting styles that we do. Um, this suit has probably cost, not counting the $3,000 for the helmet, which was custom made for me, mm -hmm. um, the suit itself, over the years, I'm probably five thousand dollars into it. Okay, yep. and so, like, in terms of difference as to how the armor that you're using is made and was back then, like, what would, like, in a comparison, which which one would you probably want to put on? What, what we're making nowadays or back then? Nowadays, our metallurgy is a lot better nowadays. Um, the thickness, this is thicker than the armor they wore back then. Okay. Uh, if you go and in, into a museum, say you go into a museum in New York to the Met, or if you go over to Germany to some of their museums, and you measure the thickness on their pieces, um, they're a lot thinner. They're at least a millimeter thinner than these right here, uh, than what I've got right here. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. And finally, uh, you said earlier that there was a uh, like you have a process of putting the armor on. Mm -hmm. Um, so is it like it takes uh, two people to put the armor on? Is there a 
it takes two people for plate armor. Mm -hmm. Other armor that is like brigandines, the coat of plates or whatever. Mm -hmm. Usually those guys can put it on all by themselves because they're designed to do that. You need, once you put plate armor on, which is what this armor is, um, it's a lot difficult, more difficult to reach into certain areas. Um, so you need that help to be able to put that stuff on. All right, thank you, Brian. You're welcome.